Hey everybody, welcome back to Jackson Jet Setting. Here we are at the Grand Floridian. I'm gonna do a full tour of this place, give it a little review, see how things look over here at what is usually called the fanciest resort in Walt Disney World. If you like resort tours like this, especially at Walt Disney World, please subscribe to the channel. Give this video a like, it really helps us out. The Grand Floridian sits closest to the Magic Kingdom on the Seven Seas Lagoon. It's sneakily big, as you can see from the map. Lots of buildings. They actually have a DVC property here. They have the Wedding Pavilion. They have a lot of stuff that we're going to go explore here. Love the Seven Seas Lagoon, though. Built in 1971 and just a fantastic resort. So one great thing about the Grand Floridian is that it is on the monorail system. So it takes you straight to Magic Kingdom. That's the first stop. If you want to head over to Epcot, you can also take the monorail. It's three stops on the monorail going through the Contemporary Resort over to the Ticket and Transportation Center where there's a quick little transfer here. It takes about 30, 40 minutes depending on if you time the monorails right. If you don't want to take the monorail, you can take boat transportation to the Magic Kingdom as well as the Polynesian Resort. Really a nice boat dock out there right next to Narcusi's restaurant. We'll show you that restaurant in just a bit. Really a beautiful ride though and very quick. And if you want to walk to the Magic Kingdom, you actually do that. And you can walk over to the Polynesian, though right now that is closed for construction of the new DVC tower. We had a rental car this trip, so we used the included self-parking at the Grand Floridian. Valet parking is still for a charge, but it's nice to have the free parking back. You also have free parking at all of the theme parks, so if you wanted to drive instead of rely on the bus or the monorail, you can definitely do that. We're going to begin our tour here at the valet. Really cool Victorian era cars and buggies right up front getting you in the theme. A number of different Disney IPs sprinkled throughout the resort including Alice in Wonderland, Beauty and the Beast, Mary Poppins. Lots of cool stuff to discover and it's never really in your face here at the Grand Floridian. It's just sort of hidden in various themes of the bars or uh, it, it's just really tastefully done I would say. Now, how amazing is this lobby though? I couldn't stop looking up at the amazing domes and chandeliers during my stay. It's just absolutely gorgeous here. Don't forget to also look down though. There's lots of amazing tile work and marble flooring here at the Grand Floridian. Lots of Disney characters sprinkled throughout, hidden in the ground. Your main check-in desks are right to the right as you walk into the main lobby. You do have mobile check-in though through the My Disney Experience app. That worked flawlessly for us. Our magic bands worked to open the room. Super easy to do and they tell you exactly when your room is ready so there's no need to actually visit the front desk unless there's some sort of problem or if you have a question. The cage elevator to the right is super cool. Reminds me of an elevator that I actually saw in Havana, Cuba on a trip a number of years ago. Really reminds me of just those very antique hotels that do still exist in the world. Disney did a great job of making that theme come to life here. Piano in the lobby. There's a player that comes around every so often, plays Disney tunes, things by request. It's really amazing. And this birdcage, antique birdcage, is actually from Spain, I heard. So pretty cool stuff. But lots of places here to sit and just either people watch or wait for your room, just take a break from the parks. Lots and lots of lounging here and kind of feels like that's what they did back in the Victorian era. Now there are a number of shops and restaurants sprinkled throughout the main building here. There are also rooms above that actually have the concierge level of rooms. So there is a concierge lounge if you are paying for those types of rooms. Has included breakfast, it has snacks in the afternoon, even drinks at night, good firework views. So it is a pretty premium for those rooms, but if you're looking to splurge, you can message us. Uh, we have all of our contact info on the channel. We can help you book those rooms or any room really across the Disney resorts. Now the shop over here to the right is the Curiouser Clothers. They have a lot of clothing items, a lot of brand name Grand Floridian gear. I probably mispronounced that. I'm sorry if I did. Please correct me in the comments, but that's a pretty hard thing to say and I think it's kind of on purpose. But over here is the tea room. This is not yet reopened from the pandemic, unfortunately, but they used to offer really cool tea service in this room. I feel like it will come back at some point because it's a popular little add-on to someone's vacation. So we just gotta wait and see what they actually do with this space. And they do have a Beauty and the Beast theme with Chip actually in one of the cabinets over there. So it's pretty cool. But moving along with our tour, we're going to go check out some of the other restaurants that are right off the main lobby. There is another shop, the Sandy Cove Gifts and Sundries shop. So this is going to have your snacks, your beverages. They have like a little fridge in the back with some beers, wines, sodas, that sort of thing. 
sort of your to-go items are going to be over there. And as we make our way into this alcove to the right is going to be the DVC desk. I do recommend asking and seeing if they have any incentives going on for doing a 30 minute tour. I got a $200 gift card during my stays. That was pretty awesome. But across the way is the Grand Floridian Cafe. This has been open a very long time. It's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Good little option. It's typically busy, but a little easier to get into than some of the other restaurants. So I do recommend checking this out during your stay. But the newly opened 1900 Park Fair opened like during our stay, which was pretty cool. And it's got a wishes character theme and it's open for breakfast and dinner. So pretty cool stuff in there. We didn't get a chance to try it out, but uh, our kid is a little young still for the character dining, but we'll probably be experiencing all of that very shortly. So now we're gonna move up to the second level of the Grand Floridian's main lobby. And to the right here is the Mickey Mouse Mercantile. So that's gonna be another souvenir shop. And this is the level that you're gonna board the monorail from the resort. They have a nice little photo area over here. I think some characters show up from time to time. Wasn't up here for any of that, but they do have them pop into these resorts often. I did like this little balcony that was outside. Good place to just enjoy the fresh air of Florida. Had the monorail running by, so pretty cool that this is a little hidden area. Probably not a lot of people that actually end up using this patio. Doesn't have a fire view or anything, so if you want a little place to maybe read a book, this is probably a good little nook to do that. This second level is also gonna be home to a couple of the fancier restaurants here at the Grand Floridian. There are just so many restaurants here. We were here for only three nights, so we didn't get a chance to try all of them. Plus, some of them are just so exclusive that it wasn't even worth trying to get into, just given our travel patterns right now. But walking up ahead was one that we did get to, get to try, and this is the Enchanted Rose Lounge. So this is not really a restaurant, but more of a bar lounge atmosphere. It's open in the evenings. It's got a very light Beauty and the Beast theme, but with really cool hidden details themed to, I think, more of the live action version of Beauty and the Beast. They have uh, a number of the characters that are hidden on the walls or on the bookshelves. So definitely walk around this lounge. Even if you're not dining, you can walk in here and check out some of the details. Like you have Mr. Cogsworth from the movie right there above our table. And then you got Belle and I think what is the West Wing. So pretty cool stuff. Little lounge bites, uh, all very delicious. We basically made a dinner out of this spot. Really good cocktails too. Had a really good old fashioned. They actually have a seasonal old fashioned as well. So there's gonna be a different thing on the menu pretty much every time you come here, unless you're a local. Uh, espresso martini was also on order from us. But nice little flatbread action going on here. We got some croquettes that were absolutely delicious. And we got some warm olives, which I'm always a sucker for. Making our way to the rest of the second level, though, are going to be the fanciest restaurants on Grand Floridian property, as well as Walt Disney World property in one instance. So the first restaurant that we'll talk about is... Citrico's, which is going to have a dress code, so that kind of gives you an idea of how fancy this place is. They actually have a lounge, though, that you can walk into, still looking nice, but not have a reservation and dine on some of the items that are on the main menu and get some of their cocktails, too. Um, but it's going to have a kind of a Mediterranean-style cuisine, which is definitely to my liking, but unfortunately, we just didn't have time to try this out. But next door to it is Victorian Alberts, which is the fanciest restaurant on Disney property. And it just recently received a one star Michelin rating, which is absolutely incredible. First theme park restaurant to ever receive that. Uh, so they got to be really proud of that. I've never tried it, um, but it's very expensive dinner. It's over $250 per person. Uh, and that's not including any alcoholic beverages or anything like that. So it does get a little pricey, uh, but definitely check that out. Make reservations well in advance if that's something that you want to experience here at the Grand Floridian. More antique decorations here on the second floor as we make our way towards the monorail. I was up super early shooting this video, so that's why there's just not a lot of people. This area is very busy, 24-7 almost, except for early in the morning. Uh, this is even before the parks open for the day. Um, but to the right here is the Bippity Bippity Boutique. That has not yet reopened either. I imagine they will reopen this shortly, though, because it's very popular with uh, the young girls. So hopefully that opens for them. Um, but if you are looking for that, it's still available in the Magic Kingdom. Then you have a basin store. So this is kind of the bath product store that's available in a couple malls across the country. So nothing really all that special there. 
And then above the grand staircase is a few bits of artwork. I just really love the overall feel of this place and it just feels very elegant. Not necessarily Disney, but then you look a little closer and it is Disney. So you have like Cinderella here in the ground etched in marble, which is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, and this is the back side of that cage elevator. So now let's go check out some of the outdoor areas and see what the Grand Floridian has going on. Right out the doors is gonna be Alice's Splash Zone. This is gonna be the kids splash play area. So very themed to Alice in Wonderland. The uh, Mad Hatter's hat spills awesome water at certain points in time. So it wasn't turned on while I was walk walking by, but there's little tiny slides for the kids. So this is sort of the little kids pool, which is uh, an awesome option. Lots of extra embellishments throughout the property, like these awesome fountains. And of course the Grand Floridian does have a beach no access to uh, the Seven Seas Lagoon. Um, that was taken away a number of years ago, but there is still some sand to enjoy. Lots of games for people to play. Uh, but yeah, they have that fencing up, which is uh, much needed to protect from the wildlife here. Overall though, uh, just a really great look to this beach area and it's right next to the activities pool where the water slide is. So there's always just a lot of people around here. Uh, you can always grab some to-go food and just enjoy the loungers here and enjoy uh, the beautiful Floridian views. Of course, you got some ping pong as well. So there's lots to do here. There's whole activities um, schedule here. If you're not going to the parks, they have movies at night. They have, uh, you know, tie dye events. Just check the daily schedule that's um, in QR codes throughout the resort, and you can see what's going on during your visit. Lots of places to walk though along the shoreline here of Seven Seas Lagoon, and you can see the wedding pavilion over in the background so we're gonna go check that out as we walk towards it a number of different towers though in between here and there and you have great views of the polynesian resort which is again accessible via the monorail walking path when it's not closed for construction and boat so the fairy tale wedding pavilion is at the very south end of the grand Floridian resort you can purchase a very expensive wedding here you can have cinderella's carriage take you to exchange vows they have franck's wedding planning pavilion which i think is really cool because it's actually a father of the bride reference uh, franck is the of course the wedding planner from that movie it's one of my favorite movies so that's one of my favorite details uh, on disney property i feel like it's kind of missed by people it's a kind of an older movie but really love that didn't have a chance to take a look inside of the wedding pavilion but Obviously, it's very beautiful and one of the best places uh, to get married on property because you have a great view of Cinderella's Castle and Seven Seas Lagoon. Lots of construction, though, going on right next to it right now because of the DVC Tower at the Polynesian. So we're going to walk back towards the DVC Tower, which has its own little valet area. But first, we're going to go check out where the spa is, as well as the fitness center. Didn't get a chance to go walk through the spa, but they do have treatments, everything that you kind of expect from a resort spa. They have steam room saunas, that sort of thing as well. Um, but the fitness center is located right next door. It's open 24 seven, which is great. Not a gigantic space, I would say, but you know what? There's not a lot of people using the gym on a Disney vacation, I gotta say. You're just exhausted from the parks. Who has time for the gym? You're packed day in, day out, sun rise to sunset. Who's gonna go on the treadmill if you're already walking 30 miles a day? That's all I'm saying. Because we are located pretty close to the DVC tower, there are grills available to them. So if you are staying at a DVC property, you can actually cook for yourself. There's lots of materials like full kitchens, etc., that you can enjoy. Um, so that's pretty cool. And there's a sports court here uh, with basketball, um, but no tennis here on the resort that I could find, which is unfortunate. I thought that most deluxe resorts have tennis courts, but I guess the Grand Floridian doesn't. Now we're gonna go check out the DVC tower here at the Grand Floridian. We're gonna pass under the monorail line once again, and go check out what there is to see in the smaller lobby, but probably my favorite here at the Grand Floridian, you'll see why in a sec. There is a nice little valet area here as well as a check-in desk for folks checking into this tower. It's just nice for the DVC members because they have a lot more luggage. They wanna feel exclusive like they're coming home. So they get their own little check-in area, which is nice. You can actually stay here you can rent directly from Disney or you can rent points from members themselves on a couple of different broker sites sprinkled throughout the web. But here is the reason why I love this lobby. It's the penguins from Mary Poppins. They're absolutely adorable and this fountain's really cool. Definitely check this out if you are on property. 
walking out of the main lobby here. We're going to head over, check out the pool, the main pool, I should say, at the Grand Floridian. There are two pools here on property. This is the beach pool. So the water slide's actually hidden behind the rock work. I think that's pretty clever because the Grand Floridian is more elegant feel. They want to kind of make adults feel more welcome here, I think, at this pricier property. So they hid the water slide behind rock work, but the kids still get a water slide. I think that's pretty cool. Love the zero entry over here and how it's right next to the beach. So it does have a nice little beach feel here. And then there's beaches, bar and grill uh, right in the pool area. So I got a really good lobster roll there on a previous trip. Uh, but it has your standard cocktail menu for um, Disney properties. So definitely check that out. And then this is the courtyard pool. So the courtyard pool is pretty cool too. They have some small fountains for the little ones. But this is open 24-7, so you can go swimming any time of day here at the Grand Floridian Resort. Walking more north on property towards Seven Seas Lagoon is Narcusi, so we're going to check out what our dining experience looked like a little later in this video, but that's going to be the round building over to the right. It's got amazing firework views. They actually pipe in the music from Magic Kingdom into the restaurant, so it's like you're there, just a little bit different view. You're not going to have a great view of the castle and the castle projections, but it's going to be a lot more elegant, a lot less busy. It's going to be really a lot of fun, and that's located right next to the boat dock for the resort, so I did show you already kind of the boat transportation experience here, but this is where you would pick up and be dropped off for the boats at the Grand Floridian. Now there actually is a marina here on property that you can rent boats and explore Seven Seas Lagoon as well as Bay Lake. So this is pretty cool. It's called the Captain's Shipyard and they have pontoon boats. Um, so if you wanna do a firework cruise, that's also available. They have fishing. It's really a full resort experience that a lot of people I don't think take advantage of when visiting Disney properties. It's all about the theme parks, uh, but this is available if you want a more relaxing day. Up ahead is the Gasparilla Grill in the building to the left. So that's going to be your everyday dining restaurant, your kind of cafeteria style. It's open for mobile order, which is great. Um, I grabbed Mickey waffles here pretty much every morning. I love the Mickey waffles. Um, so definitely take advantage of that. Um, I had a really good Italian, be uh, not beef, but Italian kind of sandwich here too. And right next to that is the Arcadia Game. So that's going to be the resort's arcade for kids. Or adults if you're willing to indulge but basically just a room full of traditional arcade games nothing really all that special which the Disney would kind of make these like Disney themed for some reason now let's take a look at our room so as I mentioned all these rooms have been freshly renovated in the style of Mary Poppins the sequel that came out a few years ago uh, interesting choice there but really honestly unless you're like a big Disney fan like myself you're gonna just think it's Mary Poppins themed but really, really pretty room, um, definitely fits the resort, fit my family of four pretty comfortably, three adults and one little infant. Really love the design of all the Disney rooms that I've stayed in, um, but love the backlit mirror, uh, the two sinks, makes it really easy to share a room as well. Love the H2O products that are now branded Disney, um, but love the smell of those, I know they're very popular. Sliding barn door into the toilet and um, the shower area. Um, so it's a shower tub combo still you got shampoos and conditioners on the wall there and then sort of a rainfall-esque shower coming in out from the wall all Moen um, appliances so pretty cool um, high-end brand that they use there big television over to the right little coffee area here 
Um, so this is where the mini fridge is, as well as the Keurigs that you can use um, in that machine. So that's kind of going to be Joffrey's, which is the official coffee partner. Um, actually, confusingly, there's also Starbucks. So, um, but Joffrey's all over the place here at the Disney parks, and they're also in your room. Closet space here, not really big closet by any means, and it's a little awkward to get over and grab your hanging clothes if you're sharing a room here. Probably a little bit more space in the king, um, but nicely designed, able to fit stuff. Safe and steamer and hair dryer right over here. Lots of plugs in this room though, because it is a freshly designed room, so there's plugs next to every bed on either side. Uh, people have to really charge their devices still at Disney because they are so essential for the park. So it's good that they offer that um, little Hey Disney action from Amazon that's available for people who did not really use that uh, at all. It's kind of useless, honestly, in my opinion. Nice little artwork from Mary Poppins though on the wall balcony over there that we'll check out in just a sec. Great little view though of the marina and a little bit of Magic Kingdom over to the right as well as the monorail. And that couch does um, roll down into a twin bed. It's like a real mattress. I think Disney does a great job with those. Um, so that's really awesome. A few more notes of Mary Poppins throughout the room. Uh, cherry tree and lane flowers on the wall. And then the birds and the chandelier. And there's one penguin, which I thought was really, really cool and a fun detail. Great views at night of the resort, though, from the walking path over to the Magic Kingdom. So one of the cool benefits of a deluxe Disney resort is that you actually get early entry into the parks as well as evening hours, select nights each week. Uh, so we did take advantage of both of those, which was awesome. So our dinner at Narcusi's was perfectly timed with the fireworks. We had an amazing view of them. People were already gathering out on the outdoor deck, but they pipe in the music into the restaurant. They dim the lights so you can really see the fireworks in full view out the giant bay windows in the restaurant. Food itself was really good, kind of new American cuisine, kind of had like a southern feel to it too. So I had some really good trim and grits for my main. Let's check out all the food here. Then after dinner one evening, we did take advantage of that evening hours and go ride Tron. So you actually get your own virtual queue that you can book at 6 p.m. Each day our hours really didn't start until 11 p.m., but they called the lightning lane about 10.45 p.m. Walked into the park, rode Tron, almost no wait, which was really awesome. And it was cool to ride it for the first time at night. But that is our tour of the Grand Floridian Resort. Thanks a lot for watching and making it this far. We'll see you on the next video.